flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be tremendous. We're back. Sorry that the uh, break was a tiny little bit longer than I'd expected. I did put out a community post on YouTube, but those things are notoriously not visible. Should have posted on Twitter in the Discord as well, to be honest, because uh, I think there was a little bit of confusion. But that's the reason, essentially. It was the case of uh, over Christmas, you've got my family, then was Em's family, and it sort of just snowballs and you realize you're actually finding very little time whatsoever to make videos uh so i had to take a little step back from that but we're back for now so you should have videos throughout this week which is going to be very good however unfortunately at the start of next week there's also going to be another little gap because i'm away at new year and that's fine because i've got some other days around it but i'm also away from friday to monday because i'm in norway uh up in tromsø so that's going to be um a little bit difficult to record videos on the friday and the monday what i would normally do so again apologies in advance for that after that though we should be completely back on track and not only that we should be able to start some streams which is going to be very very nice indeed no idea what i'm going to do to start with but hey we'll figure it out but also since i didn't think i actually said this last time merry christmas i hope you guys all had a great time uh got all the pants and socks that you were after, and hopefully Lynx Africa. I think I said that last time as well, to be fair, but there you go. Hope you're looking forward to the new year, uh, new year and all that jazz. You notice the moustache has kind of faded away a little bit. That's mainly because of my laziness and my inability to actually find an electric razor at the moment. But I might just keep hold of it for a little bit when I can finally sort it out anyway, because uh, the comments were interesting. And also, since it's the start of the week is it i actually don't know it's time to thank new patrons and this week it is gustavo maldonado which is an incredibly awesome name thank you for signing up sir that is incredibly generous of you and just also to everybody whether you're still a patron or you were before or you are now or just watching the videos thank you for the support over 2019 it's been awesome i've really enjoyed making videos again um just in general it's been fantastic and every time i feel like i'm just starting to flag a little bit i'll see something in the comments and be like oh yeah that's why i do this and that makes me incredibly happy because you guys are a great bunch. Right, so uh, without further ado, we're on Tom Tozer. And the main reason I thought I'd show him again is because consistently now, when we have an under-18s game, or mostly under-18s games, I'll get, like, even if we lose, it will say Toza impresses in defeat. And he has been probably the best player we've had in probably four of the last five matches for our under-18s. And as you can see, he's got four man of the match wars this year, a couple of goals, few assists. I really, really like this guy. He was the best talent that came through uh, the Youth Academy last season. And in all honesty, I actually think he's pretty damn solid and he might be able to do a job potentially in like League One in the future. Now, obviously, by the time he comes of age and all that is unlikely to be with us uh, in order to do that. But it's still nice to see him actually really doing very, very well indeed. So that's pleasing. Bosnia isn't in the EU, so Brexit wouldn't have changed anything with the uh, Jewish transfer, which does make a lot of sense. But I thought we'd also changed work permit rules in general that weren't just for EU players. I thought they'd changed the rules when we did that for all countries as well. So that's where my confusion came in. Um, but hey, I'm glad we got him. Corey Bocolossi must be lying low now to avoid the prying eyes of a conqueror. That would explain a lot. However, it did say in the dev center that he needs attention. Not sure what that means. Do we need to like rock him or something? The mustache literally drips mad hard. This is the first time for a while that I've actually felt old because I didn't understand any of that. And uh, bad times. I I'm going to be 30 next year. Keep the moustache. Moosemba is here. Well, it won't be here for much longer, so if you've got a pun for January, we might have to hang on. Question of the day. What would be a football manager equivalent to the song 12 Days of Christmas? Right, I'm going to need your help with this, because I had a little think about it, and then I realised I'm not very clever. So, give me your best 12 Days of Christmas featuring football manager references, I suppose. Um, Obviously, I'll read out the best ones. Right then, so today we're playing Fleetwood. It is probably the biggest game of the season. We did beat them earlier this year. Uh, there has, I think there was an update. I don't know what, because I couldn't see any reference to it on FM's Twitter, and usually they post about it if there's an actual proper update. But there was an update in my Steam downloads that I saw, so I don't know what that is. It doesn't feel any different, so maybe it was, maybe it was just like, I don't know, because I know they've added the Canadian Premier League, so maybe that's what that was. I don't know. So first up, first game I've actually played with FM for nearly 10 days. Uh, we got a 1-0 victory over Charlton Athletic. Robbie Burton. Now, it said it was his first goal for us, and I feel like he'd scored before, but apparently not. I think he must have set up a couple. Got his first goal. A lovely little drop inside from Matt O'Reilly, and Burton just drops. Well, drops. Bends one in the bottom corner. Um, A scrappy kind of game. It was mostly one in the midfield. We were definitely the better players with Burton and O'Reilly. They kind of ran the show here, and it was great to see Robbie Burton get us the goal. Another clean sheet, though. Very pleasing. In addition to that, Fleetwood were 2 0 up against Burton going into the final 10 minutes, and they threw it away to drop points. Glorious stuff. But then we went and beat Bradford City. This was a game where we looked a lot better overall, but we really did struggle. Took the lead early on. Regan Booty whips the ball in from corner, flicked on by Tunji Akinola, and there was Dara O'Shea to smash one home. Apparently, he made his West Brom debut in real life over the weekend, so that's awesome. Um, and then we got a late one through Tyrese Campbell. Sam Hughes played him down the line. He drove towards the box, and it was one of those ones where he just hammers it, and the keeper gets a touch on it, but it ain't enough. And Tyrese Campbell scores his 24th goal of the year to give us another. Another victory this time over Bradford. Good clean sheet again. Very pleasing for Luke McGee. 
But unfortunately, probably one of the better performances in terms of chances created in this game, but not good overall. And unfortunately, Jack Lancaster got a goal late on, ball lumped over the top from a free kick, and he was just in, slips at home with the one-on-one -on -one chance, unfortunately, and Ipswich Town beat us. They've not been great this year, but they've still got some solid players in this squad, and unfortunately it was not to be. Ricky Griffiths also went off injured and was going to miss like eight weeks with a uh, like a thigh strain or something like that, which is a bit strange, but there you go. You might also notice that someone called S. Walker, well, he was the Scottish lad we talked about that signed from Aberdeen uh, to play back up to Brandon Fletcher essentially. He's not amazing, and I think we might have overpaid slightly, but he's got decent enough crossing, his dribbling's fine. Great tackling, though. Uh, good pace and acceleration. He can really bomb down that wing, and he's got excellent, for the moment anyway, I'd say, mental attributes. So I think he's a pretty solid understudy to Brandon Fleming, and he's definitely going to get some game time this year, and it saves us having to put Booty in there, essentially, and that, that's kind of the main reason for me, uh, bringing him in. No other signings, though. However, we did have a bid from Preston for Ian Saunders. They bid £325,000 for Ian Saunders, a player which I must remind you, cost us nothing. He was a free signing. Initially, they bid 55. I said, on your bike. And then they came back on the final day of the transfer window to bid 325. I said, on your tandem. And they eventually pissed off. Uh, Saunders hasn't complained, so that is pleasing. But it shows you there's some real value in Ian Saunders after he single-handedly destroyed Gateshead. So, good times. Actually, we might as well show you the league uh, properly prefer. We do that. Bolton, I think they got a draw against someone else, and they did lose to Coventry too. So Fleetwood have dropped out of the top two temporarily, but they do have a game in hand. Uh, but that isn't today either, though. So they could go back above Sunderland, who really have started to finally start firing on all cylinders. But it really is these three sides for that final spot. We're eight points clear at the moment. I think we're going to be heading to the championship. Campbell's got uh, 20 goals this year. You'll see that um, Junior Stanislas, who's playing for Pompey, is the second highest rating in the league, and I still think Booty's going to do it. Someone said, how did Pompey get Stanislas? Oh, we don't know much about him, but we can certainly see how much he moved for, surely. So, went to Sheffield United. We knew that. And then left to go to Portsmouth for £675,000. Um, there you go. Pompey playing it big, really. Um, not Probably the smartest idea when you consider that they're sort of sitting comfortably mid-table. Look at this! Plus 16 goal difference. And yet they can't seem to get anywhere near the playoffs right now. They are losing way too many games. So, uh, injuries to both Dropkick McPhee and Ricky Griffiths, not ideal. Uh, we've had a lot of games in very... Like, there's been... It's been like Monday, Saturday... No, sorry, not Monday. Like, midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend. Every single week for ages now. We're just going to do the selection advice first. Then we can adjust it ourselves. So, it does look as though it is going to have to be uh, Mr. Lee on the left. And then... Yeah, actually, to be honest, I would like to keep trying out uh, Ronnie Coates over here. Booty, surely Sam Hughes is fit enough. Oh, he's not, is he? That might actually have to be the approach. Try all three of these guys in the midfield with Fleming, O'Shea, Akinola, Dehaney, and McGee. That's fine. On the bench, Coverwell, Oliver, Sam Hughes, Hegeber, Walker, who's just getting back to fitness, Baldwin, and of course, Milan Bars. So they love an inside forward. That much we know. Uh, Coots, obviously, is the man to go after. Hansen, too. And uh, yeah, Hunter is there, and he is just godly. Also, little update as well. If you have been using my tactic, and I know like 200 odd of you have actually downloaded it and are giving it a crack, let me know kind of what results you've been getting. I'm very, very curious about that. Um, and also, don't forget to rate it five stars because apparently that's a thing on Steam. So yeah, do that. Also, Rotherham United knocked out Manchester United from the FA Cup. So that's kind of a cool factor as well. And that's going to go out of play. Lovely. Can he find the cross? Goes back for Duhaney. And, oh dear. And uh, Lee, somebody find a shot. Anybody. Duhaney. Here we go. We can trust him. Lee. And Dehaney, and what a save from that was a good strike. That was had some venom on it. Goes past one man. Here we go. We've still not seen a lot out of Lee so far. I'm Burton, and it's on target. We're having a good number of shots. Oh god, they've stood off of Ashley Hunter again. I don't know if that's the wisest idea. He's in behind now, and good save by McGee. This is going end to end so far, and this could honestly be. I don't. Know, <laughs> I think either team could end up winning this game three 0 or something. Fleming, Fleet would have pushed up, and it's going to allow there to be a lot of space in the centre of the park so far. And Hunter's in behind again. And he's trying to dink the goalkeeper, I think. If we could just keep hold of him for a little bit. And it's O'Reilly. Knock it back inside, perhaps. Fleming. Lots of players in the box to aim at. And one of them's Duhaney again. Oh, lovely long ball for Coates. He's got some dribbling on him. And Burton's in. And a good save again by Krellin. Robbie Burton is making some excellent runs from that box-to-box -box role. Like, even more so than when O'Reilly plays there, I'm finding. I think he's more suited to it. Booty. And it's headed away again. O'Reilly. Back for Booty. Edge of the box, perhaps. No, nope. wins us another corner. Always a good sign. Flicks it across, and Akinola. Really nice clearance from Akinola. Now we've got a chance. Coates could take both of these guys on, I think. And he's got the pace to go round one. Can he square it? Oh, my God. Tyrese Campbell. Beautiful. For that is all about two people. Tunji Akinola and Ron Coates. The clearance from Akinola is sensational. But Ron Coates has got so much to do here. He's in his own half when he gets it. Just keeps on pushing to the sideline. And then whips a lovely low ball across there. 
Lovely little ball. Ah, oh, beautiful. That's a really, really nice goal. Coatsy, he can't cross for shit, but that is some sensational play from him. A second half where we can keep getting the ball to Lee and Coates. That seems to be our main way through. I don't think their fullbacks can handle the sheer dribbling ability of those two. I don't know what Lee's dribbling is like, actually, but something to hang on to now. We've only let them have one shot on target in the first half, and that's pleasing. Oh, God, Hansen straight in, and McGee with a... That is a tremendous save from McGee. Fleming wins it. O'Reilly, go on, down the line. Here we go. Lee's got a chance to take on his man. Can he do it? I don't think he's quite got the ability of Coates. Coates is through, and Burton has scored his second goal of the season there. Ron Coates will grab... I... Did he lay that back for him, or is it just his shot that's deflected into, Ron Co uh, into Robbie Burton's path? That is a really nice piece of play again, I've got to say. The ball down the line from O'Reilly is great. Lee just holds on to it. I didn't think he could quite take his man on, but he's found an excellent cross instead. Does Coates actually lay this off? No, I think he's tried to shoot there, and it's deflected into the path of Robbie Burton, but who cares? We're 2-0 up, and Ron Coates has grabbed a pair of assists, technically. Still got to be careful, though. We are vulnerable from set pieces as much as we'd like to score from them ourselves. Lee, holding off everybody around him in a terrible pass. And we might have just let ourselves in for a world of hurt here. Oh my god, McElhenney's right through everybody. And another insane stop there from Luke McGee. And it's Walker. Oh, he's got some pace on him. Ball through, and he's put it in the back of the net. Tyrese Campbell with his second of the match, and we're now 3-0 up away at Fleetwood Town. I did say it's one of these games that could go either way and could end up being 3-0 to either team. Stephen Walker's come off the bench and got his first... Uh, this is just really nice per work here, but th that first touch from Walker just to sprint away. Lovely ball in, and Campbell's shot. I don't think it actually does deflect. It's just a good goal. Uh-oh, free kick time. And, well, wow, completely unmarked and cleared, and... Wow. That should have been a goal. Clipped away. And Sunderland have scored a second. O'Reilly sits it through for Baldwin. Saved by Krellin. And it's a foul, but I think that will probably kill the final parts of this match. And yeah, it's a yellow card for O'Hara. O'Hara? Dara. Dara O'Hara. That'd be glorious. And surely that will do it. Oh, and a good save by McGee to finish off the match, hopefully. And we're going to win 3-0 away at... Wow. And I did say earlier in the game that it's one of those ones that could go either way with teams having both chances and end up winning 3-0, which is exactly what's just happened. Um, we were fortunate to win that game by as much as we did. They had eight chances and didn't score. McGee somehow only gets a seven despite saving almost, well, literally everything, uh, which is a bit shameful from the game again there. But we were very fortunate to win that game in the way that we did. I think a draw probably would have been a fair result in this one. But hey, we had that 4-1 against Coventry, I suppose. But still, that is a massive win. Right, crew now. We've got to keep this ball rolling. Right, we're back. We host crew. Fleetwood are away at Shrewsbury, and Sunderland are at home against the MK Dons. And where about Coventry? Are they... Where are they playing? Away at South End. Ooh, okay. I really do hope that Bolton don't sack Emma Hayes when they inevitably go down, because they've got some crazy good results since she's taken over, but they were never going to do anything. Like, this should be a nailed-on winner, but unfortunately, we're going to have to rest some players. I'm going to do this selection advice thing again, and then just change it to my liking, because... we Is McPhee still... Yeah, not really fit. But that's fine, because we can bring Sam Hughes back in. I might actually give Stephen Walker a start here ahead of Fleming, just to see how he does, though, because he got that great assist. On the bench, Cobble, Oliver, Baldwin, Hegebert, Fleming, Hamblin, and, of course, Millen Vars. Right, more of the same, please. Maybe, yeah, maybe the luck will come back and bite us in this game. And don't worry, we're going to talk about all the response to my ideas for little uh, changes to the save in the next episode, because there's quite a lot of stuff to discuss. Hopefully, this should be a fairly straightforward home win against Crew, which will really see us start to... Because I mean, the games are so thick and fast. We've got another game against Blackpool midweek, and I think... Or is that the weekend? I think this is midweek. I, I lose track, after all. And I think, finally, after that, we actually have a full week's rest, which will enable us to get a full-strength side back. But to be fair, I think with a lot of changes, we've done a very, very good job over this period. And we should have youth intake very soon. Brindley. Akinola. I really am keeping an eye on Ron Coates at the moment, because he's doing a great job. F Campbell! Oh, not quite. Not quite. He had his chance one-on-one -on -one and he couldn't do it. It's a pretty stagnant game so far. We've had a couple of little chances here and there, but not a great deal. And not the crew have done a great deal either. Really does just feel like without Regan Booty on the pitch, we just don't have the same level of creativity that we do when he's on it. He's just so good. He's gonna have a little mazy run himself here. Lee. Back for Walker. Good ball in. Campbell clears. No, nope. it's gone straight for Ron Coates. Robbie Burton. Oh, wow. Oh my God, Robbie Burton. Bloody hell, he's looking like a absolute menace lately and it is finally about time he started showing a bit of that and Sunderland tuning up now and oh god it's all the way through and it's put in the back of the net by Josh Barrett but it is offside and crew very nearly had the lead there nice ball Coates Burton oh god he's done it again Robbie Burton gives us the lead here my god he's got three goals in like five matches now it might even be three goals in four games I don't know where this has come from suddenly giving him a run in that box-to-box -box midfield role has turned into an absolute gem for us. And also, Ron Coates with another assist. Great ball in from Walker. Coates just knocks it down. Per oh, that is really, really clever play from Ron Coates. I'm starting to like him more and more in that right, that right wing role. My God. I think we might be stumbling onto something here, and it is very, very pleasing. O'Reilly's ball in. 
and it's headed into the back of the net by Dara O'Shea. And we've suddenly scored two goals in as many minutes and find ourselves two goals to the good and really starting to fly at the top now. But O'Shea with his fourth of the year. O'Reilly with another assist there instead. Just simple one this time. Ball whipped in and there's Dara O'Shea rising highest and we've scored a corner goal. With the way that Coates has been playing, I think he's actually starting to earn the name Ronnie Coates now. And O'Shea nearly grabs himself another one. And it looks like it's going to be another win. And more importantly, another clean sheet for Luke McGee. Another two to add to his repertoire. And he has been sensational this year. And Hegeber is actually really pushing for this year. And he somehow won it. Not quite. Notts County 2, Crew 0. And McDonald's, Harry Charles, I never thought I'd celebrate them scoring, have turned a 2-0 deficit down uh, away at Sunderland and have won. That could help us even more. Huge result. And Matt O'Reilly, nine key passes too. Well, that really does change stuff. Sunderland's still right in there, but Fleetwood probably will return back into that top group. We are in a great spot right about now. Um, that's tremendous. Particularly as the McDonald's are in the relegation zone. They've just gone and won 3-2 away at Sunderland. Bolton lose, unfortunately, though. Uh, they are struggling a little. He's literally had a good period of games and his agent's already like, well, hello there. We've really picked it up here. Some decent... I mean, look at this. We're barely conceding goals lately and that's really, really tremendous. The last time we conceded more than one goal in a league game... Uh, was against Coventry, as it happens, actually, so that's not too bad. So, hmm, where do now? I feel like another double live con wouldn't go amiss here. I don't really want to do the McDonald's because they're, they're not the best side. And I might do the same kind of situation here. So we'll do a pair of away games where Bristol Rovers and Scunthorpe to really give us a bit of a challenge. We've got Blackpool, Cambridge United, and MK Dons coming up off camera. So hopefully we can keep this train going and Robbie Burton will continue to be excellent for us because recently he's been on fire. So if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like, that'd be tremendous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be awesome as well. I'll join you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>